Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're going to do another 12 skills video. Now, last year, actually, it was probably more like two years ago, I started this 12 skills for the home cook, and I was hoping to get through that, all 12 skills, um, within the year, but as life happens, I didn't do that. So I thought I would continue this series and give you another skill that I think that every home cook needs to know. In fact, today I feel like this is one of those things that a lot of people don't do and they wish that they knew how. And I just wanna show you how easy it is. So today we are gonna make our own pizza dough. And not only are we gonna make our own pizza dough, but we're gonna make chicken cordon bleu pizza. I, I kid you not, this is a thing. At least I hope it's a thing because I had the ingredients for chicken cordon bleu in my refrigerator and I was like, can you do a pizza chicken cordon bleu style? I bet you can and we're gonna try it. So mostly this video is for the pizza dough itself. So this is a 12 skills video for pizza dough, but we're gonna make chicken cordon bleu pizza. You ready for this adventure? Let's get started. All right, the pizza dough ingredients that you're gonna need are four cups of bread flour, plus more for rolling, one teaspoon of sugar, two and a half teaspoons of yeast, two teaspoons of salt, one and one half cups of warm water, 110 degrees, two tablespoons of olive oil, plus more to coat your bowl. And if the chicken cordon bleu pizza turns out well, here's what else you're gonna need. Three chicken thighs, one can of cream of chicken, one half cup sour cream, one teaspoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, Swiss cheese, and thinly sliced ham. All right, so you're gonna put all of that flour into the bowl of your stand mixer, along with the salt and the sugar. Now, can you leave out the sugar? I mean, you can, but pizza dough is that good because it has that sugar in it. Plus, it helps feed our yeast. And we're gonna get that yeast in there. We're gonna go ahead and drop the mixer down and turn it on knead. Now, um, this is the new stand mixer from Pampered Chef. I absolutely love this mixer because it has a knead function and I don't have to do any guesswork. So as soon as this starts, I'm gonna go ahead and get in my olive oil and my one and one half cups of water. All right, so we have an on button over here and we're just gonna turn it to knead. Knead for eight minutes. Sure, we'll go for eight minutes. So as soon as it starts, I'm gonna go ahead and get my other ingredients in. So I'm gonna get my olive oil and my water. And I'm just gonna let this do its own thing. Um, if you have a regular stand mixer, you will just need to knead this until everything comes together in a tight ball. And it will take probably about five minutes. Meanwhile, let's season our chicken. So I just have some uh, regular chicken thighs here that I defrosted from my freezer. And I'm just gonna give them some salt and pepper and get them into the air fryer because they do indeed need to be cooked before they go on top of my pizza. So I'm gonna leave, um, use the Linker um, Gravity Salt and Pepper Shakers, which everybody in my house loves these. So if you are looking for some bougie salt and pepper shakers, I'll leave a link. This is not sponsored, I just love them. And did you hear that? The mixer knows that it is time to increase speed so that we can get all of that in there. All right, once those are salted and peppered, we're gonna get them in the air fryer. Here we are about halfway through and you'll see the dough is starting to pull into a ball. That is perfect. All right, and onto our tray with no oil. I will leave the oil off because I kind of, it's already gonna be a pretty fatty meal with it being chicken cordon bleu. So we're just gonna leave it off. And I'm gonna get this into the air fryer at probably air fry for like eight minutes and then I'll check the um, temperature inside. All right, now that that's almost done, let's go ahead and coat our bowl in some olive oil because we don't want the dough to stick as it rises. I'm also going to coat the top of the lid that I'm gonna cover it with. Um, you can just use plastic wrap, but I love the stretch fit limbs from Pampered Chef. I'm gonna coat it because it might rise uh, high enough depending on how much dough I have. I don't think the dough will rise higher than this bowl, but just in case, I would hate for it to stick. Let's see how much time we have. We have two minutes and 28 seconds left. Um, I'll probably let it go for the whole time, but I thought I would mention 
that if you're doing this and your dough seems a little bit too sticky or a little bit too um, dry, go ahead and add little bits of flour or little bits of water to bring it to kind of a, the consistency where you can touch it and it's not sticking to you. We have two minutes. Let's go ahead and throw together our cordon bleu sauce. Now, is this true cordon bleu sauce? No, no it's not, but it's good. Trust me on this. I've used this in my no fuss chicken cordon bleu recipe and it is so delicious. So it's semi homemade. Thank you, Sandra Lee. Um, we're gonna use one can of cream of chicken soup. And today I am choosing to use, and it was a choice, and now I'm thinking about the said choice, but it is a cream of chicken soup that is 98% fat free because I figured I'm using full fat sour cream and full fat cheese that maybe I could cut a few calories using fat free. I don't know, I've never had it. I'll let you know what I think. So whole can of cream of chicken soup. We're gonna do that half a cup of sour cream. Give that a good mix. We're gonna add the lemon juice and the smoked paprika. Now, if you have regular paprika, that's fine too. The smoked paprika just gives it a like another little hit of something something um, that this sauce really needs. You can also put in a dash of Worcestershire to give it that umami flavor, um, but we're just gonna keep it just like this. There we go, now our dough is ready. All right, let's get this out onto our mat and see what we have. Oh, everything's already smelling so good. All right, and with, with a dough scraper, we're just gonna get this guy out and look at how beautiful that is. So I did zero work for this beautiful dough. So now we're just gonna push it into a ball a couple times. So we just want to roll it to a ball and make sure it's all nice and smooth. It looks great though. I feel like I wanna do it like sourdough and be like, hey, but that's not the kind of dough it is. It's not gonna do anything. So that looks great. Your dough should look just like this. It should be squishy and yet elastic. So when it pulls away, you have a little bit of a window pane, but not much. Okay, let's grab our bowl, well-oiled bowl, get it in there. Make sure it twists around because you don't want it to stick anywhere. And then we're gonna cover it. All right, and now we're gonna leave this in a warm place for one hour. Okay, welcome back. It's been an hour and look at how much that has risen. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this out. I'm just gonna plop down and we're gonna deflate it a little bit and then we're gonna let it rest again for 10 minutes. However, if you're making pizza right now, go ahead and get your pizza stone heating up in your oven at 475. It needs to be in there for like half an hour to an hour warming up so that whenever you put this pizza right on top, it will begin cooking right away. So what we're gonna do is you can see that um, the dough looks awesome. There's not lots of nice bubbles and it's gonna make a great pizza dough. So we're gonna just divide it in half. Hopefully it's good enough and we're just gonna deflate it a little bit. So I'm just gonna treat it like my sourdough and just be like, okay, Looks good. And then again, over here, I'm just gonna kind of put it into a ball, just deflate it a little bit. You don't wanna push all the air out of it, but you wanna push a little bit out. So now we have our two balls. And while that oven is preheating, we're gonna cover this with a towel and let it rest for about 15 minutes or so. All right, 15 minutes is up. And so now we have a little bit more relaxed balls um, and we're just gonna work with one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this one off to the side and we're going to stretch this guy. I'm gonna turn it over. If you're not working with a pastry mat, go ahead and get some extra flour so it doesn't stick to your board or your counter. But since I'm using a pastry mat, I don't need a lot of extra flour, which is really great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pulling and stretching my dough. Now you could use your rolling pin, which is why I got my rolling pin out. However, you don't have to. You can do this totally organically and kind of do it, you know, like they do over in Italy or even France. Um, just stretch your pizza dough to whatever size that you want. And if you want a round pizza, 
that's fine. You do, you do you. I like my edges to be a little bit thicker and um, like more bite to it. So then I want to just keep my edges kind of thick, I guess is the best way to put it. So I'm just gonna stretch and stretch and stretch. And this is the kind of pizza dough that you can pick up and stretch a little bit more. You absolutely don't have to, but um, you can because it is a very stretchy pizza dough the way that we made it. So that looks fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna let that rest again for just a little bit. So I'm gonna cover it with a cloth. I'm gonna grab my other pastry mat. <laughs> yes, I have to. All right, and once this is all rested, so it's gonna rest again for about another 10 minutes. Once it's all rested, we're gonna get it topped and into the oven. So make sure that you have all of your cheese um, grated and ready to go. If you're doing, you know, traditional margarita pizza, make sure you have your mozzarella. And if you're doing chicken cardon blue pizza, make sure all of your stuff is done, which my chicken took about 13 minutes in the air fryer um, until it was done. And I cut it up, it's sitting back there, ready to go. So we'll have pizza in just a little bit. I feel like, I, f I feel, I feel like I want to stretch that just a little bit more. All right. Ah, that's not quite big enough. Oh, well, relax. 10 minutes. Relax. Okay, 15 minutes is up. I went ahead and moved one of the pizzas over there so that I could deal with it later. But we're just going to deal with this one. Now, if you do not have a pizza peel, um, you're going to need to make this on, like, transfer this to a piece of parchment paper that you can get into your oven. But since I have a peel, not very good at it, we're going to use that. However, I don't have any cornmeal, so I'm just going to use some regular flour on the top just so that it won't stick. Um, because once I put this fresh pizza dough onto this peel, it's going to stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my pizza dough, I'm going to get it onto my peel, and we're going to try to fit it completely on the peel so that when I scooch it off, it will be, I folded it over. Man, it's fine. Okay, now let's make sure that it's not sticking anywhere. Okay, so now that we know that it's, we, we're, we have ensured that it is moving, we will go ahead and dress this pizza up. Okay, so we're gonna take that chicken cordon bleu sauce, sauce that we made, and we're just going to uh, paint it all over our pizza. Um, now, because I've never made this chicken cordon bleu pizza before, I honestly don't know how this is going to taste, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a home run, which is why I'm doing this video, because I love chicken cordon bleu, and I feel like chicken cordon bleu pizza should be a thing. And I'm just gonna treat it the same way that I would treat regular pizza sauce. So paint it on in a thin-ish layer, keeping it about mm, half an inch from the edges, because I like that extra crust, you know what I'm saying? And then let's see, let's go ahead and get our Swiss cheese right over the top of it. And you're not gonna want a ton of Swiss. Uh, just get enough that everything has some Swiss cheese. And the reason is too many toppings on your pizza will prevent your crust from cooking. I know it sounds like a good idea to do, you know, a lot of cheese or whatever, but unless you're dealing with an already cooked crust like boboli or something like that, um, you want to be sparse with your cheese, at least at this point. Take your cooked chicken and we're just gonna sprinkle our cooked chicken kind of all over. And you definitely don't wanna put raw chicken on this pizza because this pizza is only gonna cook in about 10 minutes. Lastly, we are going to, no, it's not lastly. Next, we are gonna put on our ham slices. So I sliced and then julienned this ham so that it is kind of like in strips. And we're just gonna sprinkle it all throughout the pizza. I feel like this could use some pineapple too, you know, like the ham and pineapple vibe, but no, no, no. We're just gonna keep it cordon bleu. Then last but not least, little bitty, bitty, bitty more sprinkling of cheese because I feel like I want a little bit cheese over the top of that. And there we have it, chicken cordon bleu pizza. Now let's hope 
but I can get it off of here. You wanna watch me try to put this in? Let's move over that way. Okay, here we go. Pizza going on. Okay. I'm no good at this. It's fine, it's fine. Go, 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 commit. Here we go. Whew. I went ahead and made the other pizza on a piece of parchment because uh, that made me really, really nervous. All right. Set a timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, check to see if the crust is done and everything is nice and bubbly. And if it is, we're ready to eat. Okay, it's time to get it out. Oh, oh my goodness. Check out that beautiful pizza. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the prettiest darn chicken cordon bleu pizza you ever did see. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this one in on the piece of parchment. It's gonna be real easy. All right, well, look at that fantastic pizza. Look at how the crust has browned and it looks fantastic. And let's check the underside. Oh yeah. Okay, that is fantastic. I love how the crust turned out. The little bumps and big stuff on each of the sides, absolutely fantastic. Let's cut into this and see, number one, we wanna see what that crust looks like. Number two, we wanna see what it tastes like. Oh, nice and crispy. Did you hear the crisp? Looks great. Oh yeah, look at the bubbles and the rise in that crust. Oh man. Making your own pizza dough at home should be a skill that everybody has because it is so easy. Yeah, it takes a, takes a little time, but I it was so easy. Okay, but chicken cordon bleu pizza. Is it a thing? Should it be a thing? Let's find out. Mm. Yes, it should be a thing. Oh my goodness, that is so good. This crust is amazing too. Nice and crispy on the bottom, but yet chewy and soft on the inside. My brain is very confused right now because it feels like it wants that mozzarella, you know, like the salty kind of mozzarella flavor, but instead it's getting that Swiss cheese and the crispy ham kind of gives it that bacony vibe along with that chicken. This might be my new favorite pizza. I like it. Chicken cordon bleu pizza, have you ever had it? Probably not. I mean, I didn't even Google it to see if it was a thing, but it is now. Oh man. And the sauce is perfect. The sauce has the right bit of savory and unctuousness and salt. When I've made this in the past with someone else, they were like, how come you didn't add any salt to the sauce? Because that cream of chicken soup already has salt in it, which I forgot we used the fat-free, 98% fat-free one. I can't tell. This is fantastic. Oh man. Okay, this might be my new favorite pizza, but even if you don't like chicken cordon bleu, pizza dough should be a skill that you should master. I'm obviously not a master at this, but I can make a good pizza dough in just over an hour and have fantastic pizza with any toppings I want, even chicken cordon bleu. So are you gonna make your own pizza dough? I encourage you to try it out, super easy. This is definitely a skill for the home cook. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed that video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. I do videos several times a week, and I'm always looking for the next adventure. And today we did 12 skills, and I adventured with chicken cordon bleu pizza, which will become a favorite in my house. I guarantee it. But if you have any ideas for me on where you want to see me adventure next, leave me a comment. I read all of my comments and take everything into consideration as I plan my next video. So, mmm. I'm gonna get off here. I'm gonna feed my guys and they're gonna be like, what? No kidding, it's good. All right, you guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.